blood of Jesus satisfy. Please give me pause, let me testify. Say me can't sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Me can't sit down. No, me can't sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Me can't sit down. No, me can't sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Me can't sit down. Church of God, me can't sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Me can't sit down.
A pleasant good afternoon to one and all. At this point, we're going to start the open tributes. Mm. And we will start with Sasha Maynard Huggins, followed by Kelvin Lloyd. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, the tribute this afternoon is by my sister, Zonia Maynard, who is unable to be here. We often ask why when we are faced with a difficult or new phenomena. Most times our question is left unanswered. I know the answer to one why. The why you were placed on earth. You came to an example of how to be created, committed, passionate, caring, kind, diligent, content, simple, and so much more. The idea that you are gone forever is enigmatic and simply incomprehensible. The thought of not hearing your voice or seeing your face again is unfathomable. Your selfless humble demeanor had magnetic effects as you drew people to you. These attributes did not make you weak, for you were always weak and was never afraid to voice your disagreement or disapproval. I am proud to say you helped to shape my life through your expression of unwavering support and encouragement. You were always a mere phone call away and never faltered in providing your opinion and advice. To say I will miss you is a sheer understatement. My memories of you will forever live on, just as the indelible mark you engraved on my heart. Rest easy in paradise, sweet Pike.
Emmanuel, kindly draw close. You will be next. The Emmanuel Methodist Church.
This is on behalf of this family. Yeah. <laughs> Run to on it. What? As soon as me plug it into me, try and find a thing, me see. It. Somebody wants to. If me. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the staff of the Sandy Point Free School, we would like to express our deepest sympathy to the Pike family and hope that the words to this song bring strength and comfort in your time of bereavement. I carry the gospel to the lost near and far I won't stand empty handed at God's judgment bar but I did not relax until I've done all he that lest I should leave
tribute this afternoon to a sterling teacher, an excellent example, the type of teacher that we would want others to emulate. Mr. Pike was our, for all of us, he was that person who would represent us at the technical meetings, especially for sports. And you could be sure that he would not let them hoodwink Sims. He was Sims to the core. And so this afternoon, we want to pay tribute to a teacher who has fallen, one who exemplifies the characteristics of dedication and commitment. And it is our prayer that other teachers and workers in general would follow this sterling example. On behalf of myself, Ms. Williams, and Mr. Connor, I would like to express heartfelt condolences to all who mourn, in particular to his family and the Sens family. We'll now pay tribute in song. If we'll now have a tribute by Sims. Thank you. 
Moving on, we'll now have a trip route by Maui Silly. just look around and see the different afternoon, morning, his passing. And we can just look to see the type of person that he is. We stand with our co-worker this afternoon as we all celebrate his achievement and his life. The staff will now present a tribute in song.
We will now have a tribute by Kelvin Lloyd. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I had my music set up, but um, I realized that um, internet might give me a little trouble. So I'm going to start and let the, the, the wizards follow me, the maestros. Um, Mr. Pike Wellin, as, as family knows him, was never one to settle for mediocre or the average. He was one for per perfection in education perfection in sports and so somebody might say oh that's this is not a funeral song but i think in the context of excellence i think the standard that he set the common the average the status quo was never enough My breath, let it stay this way. Can't let this moment getting loud now. Can you hear it echoing? without you all the shine of a thousand spotlights enough, never be enough towns of gold are still too little these hands could hold the world me never 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 for me for me never enough never enough never for me for me for me a tribute by Emmanuel Methodist Church.
my brothers and sisters. So the musician low a bit for us, please. This afternoon we have the Emmanuel Methodist Church, Sandy Point Methodist Church. We are here to pay tribute to Llewellyn Pike. Pike, in his early days, was a regular at the church. He used to be involved in concerts, reciting, and so on. And Boys Brigade as well, he was a member of the Sink It Second Boys Brigade. Also, his mom, Persephone, has been a staunch member of our church for umpteen years, as, as well as his sister, Patsy, Charmin, Chelbert, and Ingelbert at a point, and several of others of his siblings being members of our church. So this afternoon it is fitting that the staff of the pastor, Reverend Tyrone Hunkins, and the entire congregation for us to pay tribute. We know today is a day that we would have preferred to be elsewhere, but death is inevitable. It's something we have to face. And on my own behalf, because as manager of the St. Gates Nevis athletic team, various athletic team over the years, Pike would have traveled with me. And I could tell you he was a dedicated son of the soil. I also had the opportunity when I was a teaching practice, when I at the then Sandy Point Junior School to have taught Mr. Pike. So we have gone a long, long way back. So on behalf of our church and on behalf of my own family, because you would have taught both my son and my daughter chemistry. So I'm told that going way back, he was one of the first recipient of the Bertram Gilfillin Award. That was an award that was initiated many years ago. Very first, so Pike has served not only Charlie Mills, not only Sandy Point, but the entire country of St. Christopher and Nevis. And we just want to say to Persephone, the God in the valley is the God in the mountain. And you have seen him come to manhood. You have seen him come to middle age, although he has gone too soon. But God knows best. So, we say, Condolences to the entire family, and now we'll render a song. Thank you. 
a set of athletes who stood by Pike no matter what, and Pike was there for them. However, some persons will be filling in for them because at this moment they are very emotional and not in a position to really do the symbolic tribute. So some persons have stepped in. At this point, we will be having the final viewing. Final viewing. just asking that as you view just move swiftly along so that others can come forward.
request that this final five minutes be viewing for the family only. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can we please stand?
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Llewellyn. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will all join in and singing the song, The Great Physician.
Thank you very much. Please be seated. At this time, we want to welcome all of you to this celebration service for the life of Llewellyn Pike, a teacher, a father, a friend, a coach, an uncle, a son, a brother, and a grandfather. We also want to especially welcome the Honorable Sean Richards, our Deputy Prime Minister, who is with us this afternoon, the Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Hanley, Mr. Vincent Hodge, Permanent Secretary, Mr. Darwin Lloyd, Permanent Secretary, members of the clergy, Dr. Debbie Isaac, our Chief Education Officer, Mr. Francis Morris, our Deputy Chief Education Officer, the immediate family education officers, principals and former principals, teachers, students, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I know it's a moment when we are all sad, but the Bible tells us that he's close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. I'm so glad this afternoon that no matter what we're going through, we can call upon God and we can be assured that he's going to take care of us as we go through our time of sorrow. At this time, we'll have the tributes. It will start with the formal remembrance, and we will go in order. After that, Mr. William Hodge, Charles E. Mills Secondary School, SEMS, the Athletes, Etonics, Ministry of Education, SK AAA, Shauna Herbert, and family members. So the program will flow in that order. It was the year 1970, March 24th to be exact. Llewellyn Cleophus Pike was born to Albert Bergen and Persephone Pike. He was a very active young man growing up in the church and community. He was a quiet and reserved person, I've been told by many. In his early years, he was educated at the Sandy Point Junior School and then later the Sandy Point High School. After high school, he later attended the Bastia High School Sixth Form. He then ventured into the workforce, taking up teaching assignments at, then, at the then virtual All Age School. After some, after some time teaching, he wanted to further himself in education and journeyed to Cameron University. Upon his return, he was assigned to the Sandy Point High School later, renamed the Charles E. Mills Secondary upon, up until the time of his passing. My brother was an avid sportsman. He played football for many years, but I think he preferred to spend his sporting life coaching. He coached football on many levels, but track and field was what he loved most. He spent most of his time coaching athletes in the areas of jumps, both horizontal and vertical. He has visited places like Hungary and China because of this. My brother is remembered being a jokester. He loved to have fun, but when it was time to get serious, it was as if a switch was turned on. His daughter saw this numerous times as he taught at Sims, where she attended high school. She always had to be on her P's and Q's. He lived in the chemistry lab most of the time while at school, and when it, he wasn't home, he was right here at this place for his final remembrance. This place was like his second home. It was either for football 
or cricket on the weekends. And during track and field season and off season, he was here training and preparing his athletes. My brother touched many lives here in the community of Sandy Point and those surrounding in education and sports. He will be missed. My brother lived a humble life. No task was ever too great for him. He always figured out a way to get it done. We will remember him for his tenacity and dedication to and for his craft, his love for his community, education, and sports. Today, we say goodbye. Today, we say goodbye to my father, my daughter's granddad, my grandson my granny's son, brother, cousin, a teacher, a beloved coach, a mentor, and in many cases, a father figure, but most of all, a very dear friend. May his soul rest in eternal peace and rise in glory. Love you, daddy. Good afternoon, church. I recognize the presence of our Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Sean K. Richards, who is the parliamentary representative for constituency number five. I also wish to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Jeffrey Hanley, the elected representative for constituency number one. I recognize Llewellyn's mother, Ms. Persephone Pike, and the matriarchal side of the family, his father, Mr. Bergen, and the patriarch patriarchal side of, of Llewellyn, including the Joseph's family, and all of us colleagues, brothers and sisters. Good deeds might seem invisible, but they leave a trail that is imprinted on the hearts of others. This sentiment reflects one way in which I will remember Llewellyn. I will remember Llewellyn's respect for me as his grade six teacher. This is one of the things that have been, that has been imprinted on my heart. With the passing of Llewellyn, I've come to realize that it was an honor to have him as a student. I look back and can say with pride, Llewellyn was one of the most intelligent and one of the brightest young men that passed through my hand here in Sandy Point. My statement is backed up by the fact that when leaving primary school to embark on secondary school at Sandy Point High in the first form, he was awarded the Student of the Year Award, a scholarship that was instituted by the late Bertram Gilfillan of Sandy Point. This was no mean achievement because Llewellyn came from a class of excellent students. One of the things that also stands out in my mind in terms of Llewellyn was the training that was evident in his behavior and conduct. A respectful behavior and good manners, I attributed them to the training that he received from his mother, Persephone. And I always like to say Persephone is a name I love. It's just so unique 
Miss Gisha, I don't know, and I, I always talk about that name. Um, when I get a daughter, I'll give her that name, yeah? yeah. Okay, now I know you're listening. I must commend her. I must commend Persephone for the way she raised her children. For somebody who has come from humble beginnings, she ensured that her children receive the best education or the best gift that a parent can give to a child, and that is a good education. Persephone, you can take comfort, you and Mr. Bergen, that you have produced a son that has made a sterling contribution that we are all proud of. We know that in the natural order of life, parents are not expected to bury their children, but God, our creator, is the one who has ordained the steps in our lives. As a teacher, Mr. Pike has left a trail that is imprinted in the hearts of his students. This is evident by the outpouring of sympathies at the vigil and here this afternoon at his service. One of the commendations, one of the many commendations I heard about Mr. Pike as a teacher is that when he gave an assignment, not completing it was not an option. When he gave you your work, you had to do it. And if you didn't do it, he will be on your case until it was done. That reminded me of myself. He probably admired that when I taught him, yes? Okay. This is definitely a quality that is worthy of emulation in today's teaching force. It shows that the success of his student was his main objective. Our school, our community, our country are poorer by his passing. Though his life has only spanned a mere 50 years, the measure of his contribution is worth twice as many. We can say unequivocally that the success, Llewellyn, the success of Llewellyn's life is not measured by the medals that he has won, but by the impact he has made on those around him, especially his students. To the surviving family, mother, father, daughter, granddaughter, siblings, and indeed the extended family, on behalf of William Hodge, I want to extend my deepest condolences. Good afternoon, all. As we gather, the Charles E. Mill Secondary family has lost an exemplary the Charles. The Charzy Mills family has lost an exemplary educator and coach. Today we will pay tribute to Mr. Llewellyn Pike in song, but before we do so, one of his great friends, Mr. Lawson Webb, will come and present a biography of Mr. Pike's indelible contribution to our school.
Good afternoon, all. Um, continuous condolences, family, friends, and beloved ones. I must say that I have a lot to say, and I did a little biography of my time with Mr. Pike. For those of you who are seated, I want to take a look in the hillside and the mountainside. Mr. Pike had so much love for his athletes and so much, um, so much thoughts in development for this field that he wanted a lot for this field. He wanted steps in the hillside and because of finances, he decided that we were going to dig it concrete. Mr. Pike so much wanted to use his finances for this field that he religiously paid the lottery. And he, all, he always said that once he would have won the lottery, besides setting up his family, that he will buy this field and develop it. And I wish that they, I wish that they would have came. I would have come, sorry. Uh, to his athletes, I hope you continue to live in his name. I know that most of you had a hard time with him, and I could tell you that most of the time when he came here and he would have dealt severely with you, it was my doings. I was the one behind the incitement most of the times. It was really, in a way, for me showing protection to him because sometimes I didn't like how you went about dealing with him, having no manners, not showing up to training. And as his daughter and brother said earlier, he was always here. I was always with him most of the time as well. All right. I'm indeed privileged and fortunate to have been around the stalwart whom we would have seen in the physical form for the last time today. Here on this ground is a perfect place to give him his final celebration as it is the mecca of his productions for what made him most known. I am here to read and tribute a short biography centered mainly around his life and time at his school. Llewellyn Cleophus Pike, more affectionately known as Coach Pike or Chemistry Pike to colleagues, athletes, coaches, and students alike, was a student at the Sandy Point High School during the period of 1983 to 1987. He would have often recount the many memories of his school days, which mainly revolved around sports and academics. Upon graduation, he matriculated into sixth form for one year before seeking employment in the Ministry of Education as a teacher. This would become a career for him that spanned decades and touch many lives. Coach Pike was first deployed to the Virtual Zarlage School, where he served for a period of time excluding a two-year break to become, a, become teacher trained. After improving his qualifications, he resumed his career, but this time at the Virtual High School, where he taught mathematics and science. In 1999, Mr. Pike enrolled at In 2003, upon his return to the island, having completed his studies at Carmen, at Carmen, Oklahoma, he was assigned at the Sandy Point High School to teach chemistry and integrated science. Mr. Pike was a widely respected and extremely committed teacher who displayed a dedication to the profession that was second to none. As a testament to this fact, he also became a, te a teacher of physical education and sports in addition to his other subject responsibilities. He was not only an avid sports fan, but a certified football and track and field coach as well. Prior to 2010, Coach Pike was mainly assigned to coaching the school's football team. However, 
In 2011, he coached a school's basketball team to an inter-high school Nate Smith's basketball championship, displaying his natural aptitude to excel in any and every sport. Mrs. Mr. Pike's greatest accomplishment, besides the success of his students, especially at the CXC exams, was what he helped the school and athletes achieve through track and field. After the departure of Mr. Blyden Booty and Mr. Edwin Warner, Ms. Lauzine Williams, principal then, in her capacity, along with the school's management, decided that Mr. Pike was the fittest person to lead the management of sports in the school. As such, he was entrusted with the responsibility of being the new sports master. During his tenure as sports master, he empowered different teachers to assist with the different sporting disciplines because his primary focus was coaching track and field. Coach Pike was a certified nutritional track and field coach and was extremely passionate about producing well-nourished athletes for both his beloved Etonix Track Club as well as his alma mater. In 2010, Coach Pike as sports master ably assisted the school's track and field team to an inter-school championship. While still enjoying the victory, he was selected by the St. Kitts Nevis Olympic Committee to attend a three-month-long track and field course in the European nation of Hungary. When he returned to St. Kitts, he was elevated to the position of department head of physical education at the Sandy Point High, High School. At that time, he delegated the leadership of track and field at the school to Mr. Maxim Isaiah. As department head, he worked alongside his teachers to reform physical education. He was instrumental in getting the subject timetabled across all classes, perform block level for the last two sessions each day. He also wanted to make the subject more meaningful, and so he added theory to the subject, to the subject area as well for all classes. This meant that at promotion exams, students would be tested on the theory and practical aspects of physical education. From 2010 to 2020, Coach Pike would have, hand, would have had a hand in securing seven inter-school championships for Sandy Point High School, now Charles E. Mills Secondary School. In the first instance, he would have assisted with the wins in 2010 2014 and 2015. When Mr. Isaiah resigned in 2015, Coach Pike took full leadership of the inter-school team and steered them to a further four championships in 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. <laughs> Additionally, with the inception of the Giant Mall Relay Festival in 2017, he held the school to two championships of the four years it, it was held. Coach Pike was an extremely lauded teacher, coach, mentor, and friend. He was meticulous and passionate about both teaching and, ath and athletics. He was bestowed with three teaching awards, each for long service in education. In 2010, from the Sandy Point High School, 2017, from the Ministry of Education, the Government of St. and Nevis, and again in 2020, from the Calvary Baptist Church. Mr. Pike also would have won the Government Sports Department Coach of the Year Award twice. Additionally, the school would have won Sports School of the Year twice under his leadership. Some of the extraordinary, extraordinary athletes who have been assisted by Coach Pike as both athletes for the school, as well as part of his beloved Etonix Trap Club, are Jermaine Francis, Crystal Leibold, Nathaniel Huggins, Rianda Richards, Tahir Jefferson, Rashid Eddy, Helicia Leader, Leandre Francis, Dimitri Brown, Chishani Warner, Kalia Joseph, Erlene Webb, and Jarencia Jefferts, to name a few. Mr. Llewellyn Pike was not only a dedicated and sound strategic coach, but he was versatile as well. He coached almost every track and field discipline in his lifetime. The maestro, greatest of his time, batted 
for half of a century in life, with his last 15 runs, 15 years, being most impactful and productive. Mr. Pike's prolific legacy to his alma mater, Chuck Club, Etonics, and Conchi will always be remembered for this lifetime. Forever strong for you, forever bond with you. Rest easy, my brother, until we meet in the sweet by and by.
present, good afternoon to all. The Ministry of Education, particularly the Charles E. Mills Secondary School, has lost an invaluable colleague who was devoted to student success, not just in the academics and sports, but also in life. Mr. Pike would be remembered fondly for how he touched all of our hearts in so many different and extremely valuable ways. For his jovial personality, candid engagement, unparalleled kindness, and consideration to everyone he came across. Mr. Pike's unserving unswerving commitment to education and sports can never, ever accurately or fully explain with the mere tools of our earthly written words. So, on behalf of the Ministry of Education, the Honorable John L. Powell, the Minister of Education, and the entire education fraternity, we extend our heartfelt condolences and pray that his soul rest in peace. May the Spirit of God provide comfort and strength for his family, friends, and colleagues, and students whom now mourn and who have to adjust to his passing. So at this time, the Ministry of Education will render our selection stand by me. When the night has come And the land is dark And the moon is the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid No, I won't be afraid Just as long as you stand, stand by me so brother, stand by me. Oh, oh, oh. Stand by me. oh, stand by. Stand by me. If the sky that we look upon should tumble and fall, or the mountains should crumble to the sea I won't cry I won't cry no I won't shed a tear just as long as you stand stand by me oh stand oh stand by So brother, sister, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. 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 When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light we'll see. No, I won't be afraid. Oh, I won't be afraid. Just as long as you stand, stand by me. So, brother, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Oh, stand by. Whenever you're in trouble, won't you? Stand by me. Oh. Stand by me. Oh, stand by. Stand by me. 
stand by me, stand by me, stand by me, stand by me, stand by me. Good afternoon, Church. My name is Delwayne Delaney, President of SKN Athletics. I will begin my tribute by two quotes from the late great coach Jimmy V, who stated, "To me, we are we are to do three things each day. Three things each day. We should laugh, we should think, spend time in our thought, and number three." we should have our emotions move to tears. He further said that sickness might touch my body, but it cannot touch my mind, my heart, and my soul. And these three things will carry on forever. On behalf of the executive, Eskin Athletics, both past and present, officials, past and present, coaches, past and present, Athletes, past and present, physios, and I see some of my SKNOC colleagues, fans, well-wishers of the beloved sport of track and field, I want to continue to convey my condolences to the family, not only to the family, but to all of us as well. I'm also happy and proud to announce that moving forward, on the SKN Athletics calendar, the fixture of the Luenin Pike Invitational will always be there. I'm joined with my colleague here, Mr. Larry Inote Enango, 4x4 national record holder. And we were toying with the idea of what song uh, he should play. And we went through a couple. Of, in the end, he messaged me. He said, I got it. Pike was a jumps coach. So he'll, um, so he'll do the song, You Raise Me Up.
must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. Watch the curve that fills the tunnel. Never fall to never fail. Keep your eyes upon the jackal and your eyes upon. Of the midnight, have I all in my face? While the storm howls above me, and there's no hiding place, with the cry. 
crash of the thunder. Precious Lord, hear my cry, keep me safe till the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispered, there is no need to try. Fail, there's no end of sorrow, there's no hope by and by. But I know thou art with me, and tomorrow. storm passes by when the long night has ended and the storm comes no more let me stand in thy presence on the bright peaceful shore in the land where the tempest never comes The storm passes by. Ooh, till the storm passes over. Till the thunder sounds no more. Till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the cloud rolls forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by.
was always the motivator. And I said, you know what? Okay. Pikey behind me, so I'm going to try my best. us at the third leg and then we were basically head to head and um, so I'm at the fourth leg and I got the, the battle and I think was second probably second I think so coming on to the home stretch now I was still in second still in second <laughs> and um, I checked in no man I like I got to dig deep I got to push so it came down to a photo finish when I dived literally dived <laughs> I could I still got some goods on our now <laughs> I literally dived for the finish and Charles E. Mills came home with a gold medal. And after, after all was said and done, Poiki came and said, I know you're going to do it. And I was like, wow. Vaki, unathletic Vaki, back, you know? <laughs> so, this song is when the oceans rise. So, just sit back and relax and listen. All right.
somebody say praise the Lord. When we know that we are serving God and we have our trust and our confidence in Him, we can be still. Amen? No matter the situation. Amen. Let's just bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our first scripture reading. It will be taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, from verse 1 to 11 and 12 to 22. And the scripture reading will be done by two of Pike's sisters, Patricia and Pearl. chapter 3 verse 1 to 11 and 12 to 22 for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven a time to be born a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What gain has the workers from their toil? I have seen the business of God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is not a, nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is already has been, that which is to be already is, and God seeks out what has gone by. Moreover, I saw under the sun that in the place of justice, wickedness was there, and in the place of righteousness, wickedness was there as well. I saw in my heart, God will judge the righteous and the wicked, for he has appointed a time for every matter and for every work. I said in my heart, with regard to human beings, that God is testing them to show that they are but animals. For the faith of humans and the faith of animals is the same. As one dies, so dies the other. They all have the same breath. And humans have no advantage over animals, for all is vanity. All go to one place. All are from the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knows whether the human spirit goes upwards, and the spirit of animal goes downwards to the earth. So I saw that there is nothing better than that all should enjoy their work, for that is their lot. Who can bring them to see what will be after them? 
This is the word of the Lord. Let's all stand as we sing. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Let's all stand as we sing that song unto God this afternoon. What a friend we have in Jesus. lesson this will be taken from st john chapter 11 reading from verse 21 to 27 and this will be done by dr marcus natta good afternoon all uh, just permit me to say a few words on behalf of our Cameron University alumni. In 1999, Pike, as we, as I affectionately call him, most of us call him Pike, we journeyed to Cameron University in Lawton, Oklahoma. We were part of the first 12 students who would have gone to Oklahoma to Cameron University as part of a, a program for Caribbean students. And from there, his love, his passion, and just his personality infected every single part of that campus. So much so that there are few of us here today, but there are many more watching with this live right now. And so we send our love, they send their, their love, we share our love here with the family, our condolences. Grief is indeed the price we pay for love, and it is his love, it is our love that has brought all of us here this, this afternoon. Only if I could have done this, have us here in the hot sun on the track and field uh, pitch. And he has brought us together as well as alumni as we have a group chat and we've shared all the experiences, laughs and stories that we would have had with him. So we thank the family for sharing Pike with us, even though it was for a little time. And so I also want to extend uh, sincere condolences from my mother, Gwendolyn Natter, who could not be here. She's overseas. She sends her love to the family as she remembers Pike as a teacher 
and they were both involved in track and field as well. So to the family, to his daughter, especially our sincere condolences once again. A reading from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 11, verse 21 through 27. John 11, 21 through 27. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. This is the Gospel of Christ. At this time, it's time for us to hear the Word of God this afternoon, and the Word of God comes to us from Pastor Priska Heiliger. She's the pastor of the Evangelistic Faith Church right here in Sandy Point, and she'll come and share with us at this time. Pastor Heiliger. Good afternoon to everyone. For a few moments, I would like to share with you on the topic, life is brief. And I read from the book of Psalms, chapter 90. Psalms 90, verses 1 to 12. But there's a verse that, in particular, I want to draw our attention to. It says, Lord, Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy wrath, thy fear, so is thy wrath. And this is the verse that I want us to focus our attention on. Verse 12. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I extend condolences to the immediate and extended family of Mr. Llewellyn Pike, his colleagues, 
the athletes that he has trained over the years, and everyone who has come today to share their support in this time of grief. For the past year, it seems like there is hardly a week when we haven't heard of the death of someone that we know at home or abroad. And although we may be familiar with the scripture in Hebrews 9 and verse 27, which states, it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment, most people live their lives as if they are exceptions to the rule of death. When the scripture speaks of men, it includes all humankind, regardless of sex, profession, possession, size, or age. And every one of us have an appointment with death. Losing a loved one is the most painful thing that anybody can go through. Yet, death is an unavoidable part of life. We will all experience loss at some time or another. For some of us gathered here today, we have already experienced the death of very close loved ones. For others, it may be something that you have not experienced as yet. But it really doesn't matter how many times we lose someone who is close to us. The grief that is experienced is real. I worked with Mr. Pike for many years, and I admired his dedication and commitment to his work as a teacher, and in particular, as a coach. He trained those athletes. He wanted them to do their sport right, and he encouraged them to do their best. Today, I would like us to focus on five lessons as a teacher, five lessons from Mr. Pike's life, which should teach us to live our lives, our brief lives, to the best of our ability. Number one, lesson number one, be grateful. Too often we take life for granted. We feel like the people in our lives will always be there all the time. However, they won't. So be grateful to God for allowing you, first of all, to be alive today. Be grateful to God for your family. Be grateful for your friends and loved ones. Be grateful for those who you have lost and who have impacted your life. Be grateful for the good memories that they have left you. Lesson number two, say it, say it. One of the biggest regrets we can have at the death of someone is that we never said what we needed to say when we had the chance. If there is someone that you love, tell them. Tell them now. Tell them while you have the opportunity to. If you need to say you're sorry for something that you said or did, say it now. Say it now, for no one knows when we will lose the opportunity to do so. Lesson number three. Do it. Do it now. Tomorrow is not guaranteed to anyone. Death comes whether we expect it or not. So now that we are alive, let us live every day as if it is our last. For there are no guarantees in life. Two weeks before Mr. Pike's passing, I visited the Charles E. Bell School and I had a conversation with him. 
And in asking him how many years he had served, he told me 32 years. I said, so you're going to go to the 33 and a third? He said, no. I'm not going to go on for 33 and a third. This year will be my last. I had no idea that that would have been my last conversation with Mr. Pike. So if you have something to do, do it now. David prayed in Psalm 90, teach us to number our days or help us to make every moment count. For life is brief. Lesson number four, life is brief, so make it count. No matter how many years a person lives, our lives can be compared to a dash or a sprint. On your booklet, I want you to look. Between March 24th, 1970 and 26th February, 2021 is a dash. That dash, small as it is, represents Mr. Llewellyn Pike's life. His dash was just 50 meters short sprint. Yes, his life was short. One year representing one meter. But God had a plan for Mr. Pike. He had finished his race. He had run to the finish line. And while many of us can't appreciate the fact that his race is finished, I believe he finished and he finished well. Look around you today. If the hearse wasn't there and the coffin wasn't here and these flowers weren't, weren't here, I would have assumed that this was a sports meet. And coming down the 100 meter track, just 50 yards to go was Llewellyn Pike running with full force for he could see the end. He could see the finish line. And so I say to us today, he sprinted. He sprinted fast. He sprinted well. And today, he has left a legacy behind. Coaches, athletes, students, many persons too numerous to mention his life has impacted. And today I say to us, his days were numbered. They were brief, but they were numbered. And I challenge us today to use our dash, our little dash, to the best of our ability. And how can we use that dash? By serving the Lord. In the final analysis, my brothers and sisters, only one thing matters. Your relationship with God. For when we are laid out in front of a congregation and people are speaking about us, one day we will rise again. 
and we will give an account to God for the life that we have lived. So if you are not serving the Lord today, may Mr. Pike's life serve as a lesson to you to make your life count. There is hope. Revelation, that's the final lesson. There is hope. Revelation 21 and 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Life for us will never be the same without Mr. Pike. We may not understand why he had to go so soon, but we need to remember that he has done his part. He has finished his race. It is now our opportunity to use his life as a lesson to better our lives. So be grateful. Say it. Do it. Realize that life is brief and there is hope. Let us determine today to say kind and loving words to those persons that we love and hold dear to our hearts. Let us say sorry if we need to. Let us do what we need to do since we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Let our brief life, our dash to the finish, be the best that it can be. To his family, to his mother and father, I say to you, be grateful for the gift of his life and cherish the pleasant memories that he left. To his siblings, his daughter and his grandchild, let his life inspire you to do the best that you can. To his colleagues and his fraternity, follow his example of commitment. To the students and athletes, of Sims, let his life motivate you to do your best at all times. Let his investment in your life yield great dividends. Make him proud. Do your best. Let his legacy live on. I pray that the soul of Mr. Llewellyn Pike will rest in eternal peace. Please turn in your booklets and we are going to stand and we are going to read or recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God and our Father, we commend in your kind hands today the life of Llewellyn Pike, 
We thank you, Lord, for lending him to us. We thank you for the positive impact that he has made on so many lives. We ask, Father, even now that you will grant him peace. That you will take him in your arms and that he would be at rest from his labors. Today we pray for the family and close friends and associates of Llewellyn. We pray for comfort. We pray for strength. We pray, Lord, that during this difficult time that they will lead hard on you and know, God, that you are their strength in time of sorrow. Father, I pray in a very special way for his mother. You know her thoughts. You know her loss more than anyone else. And I pray that you, the God of all comfort, will comfort her as you alone are able to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are just about finished here, but the service continues at the cemetery of the Emmanuel Methodist Church down at Downing Street. Our recessional hymn is, And Can It Be? Just before we have the final hymn, lost and found, someone lost two small keys. If you are that person, please come now and collect them.